Ms. Gemma Rinaro, could you please briefly introduce yourself? My name is Maria Grazia Gianmarinaro. Uh, I'm the OEC Special Representative for Combating Trafficking in Human Beings. I took office in uh, March 2010. Speaking about the upcoming conference that will uh, focus more on the financial and social aspects of uh, trafficking, uh, please tell us a little bit more background about the uh, conference. What are the goals of the conference? What will you, uh, do you expect uh, will be the outcome of the conference? The main message of the conference will be trafficking is still slavery, modern day slavery. This could appear obvious, but it is not very much like this. Um, for example, we have to think what is the um, economic function uh, of trafficking in human beings nowadays in times of uh, globalization. And uh, if you think about the, the economic function, it's still the same as uh, was in the time of uh, historical slavery, in other words, to provide uh, unpaid work. Uh, to uh, exploiters. Um, so in time, in, in, um, in uh, the current, uh, current uh, economic uh, uh, situation, which is of course exacerbated by uh, the, the economic crisis, but it's, it's not only linked with economic crisis, the recourse to unpaid, cheap and un even unpaid labor uh, is growing. And this is the, the big question mark, why this happens and how we can counteract this, uh, this trend. The OSCE has an action plan to combat trafficking. You have said that there's a need to update this action plan. Why do you think there's a change needed and what do you think are the most important elements that need updating? The action plan, the OEC action plan, is a very uh, valid and forward-looking instrument that n still needs to be um, fully implemented. It is also true that uh, after 10 years, uh, we are more aware of forms of exploitation uh, that w were not very well known when the action pl plan was adopted. Uh, I give you an example for, uh, uh, for, uh, for all, uh, trafficking for the purpose of the removal of organs. At that time, in 2003, it was not even sure that this forms of, uh, form of trafficking existed in our region. Now we have evidence that this exists, that there are investigated cases. We are more aware of the needs of victims, for example, and, and, and of the needs of uh, criminal uh, the prosecution and criminal proceedings. Secondly, um, we have explored uh, in recent years new uh, approaches and new actions concerning um, labor exploitation. For example, the need to involve businesses and trade unions uh, in, a, um, a, a, um, in, a, in a joint effort to prevent and combat trafficking for labor exploitation. For example, a few weeks ago, a tragedy occurred in, in Bangladesh. Um, more than 1,000 people died in a factory uh, producing uh, dresses for very well-known uh, international brands. And so this shows that, so for example, big companies cannot hide themselves uh, behind the screen and, and say that they, they are not responsible for what happens in the supply chain. The reality is that they should uh, take responsibility and somehow this is happening, for, for at least for some of them, uh, take responsibility to clean the whole supply chain. Uh, the whole supply chain should be clean from, from um, forced labor and uh, trafficking in human beings. Uh, another area in which we can do uh, better, um, in, especially in terms of prevention, is, is child tra trafficking, which is, is also growing. Uh, for example, uh, states should be aware of their obligation to protect every single child at risk uh, especially unaccompanied and separated children or children of migrating parents, because this is the only way to prevent child trafficking. Thank you very much for this interview.